Counter-Strike just sucks sometimes, doesn't it? Okay, yeah, sure, it's one of the greatest games in esports to grace the earth. I mean, even 1.6 purist CS Sorth heathens and CSGO newcomers can all agree on that, right? Anyways, sometimes it just sucks. Your teammates were toxic, or your shots felt like they were missing, or you were getting outplayed every single round. You've had enough, no more Counter-Strike. Well, and here we are. Welcome to Pro Guides, everybody. My name is Andrew, and today we're going to be showing you what six things you can do when you're sick to death of Counter-Strike, but still want to get better at Counter-Strike. Yeah, we wish we knew how to quit you. After this video, we promise you, you'll still be able to get your CS fix, but without actually having to play the game. Just hear me out. Now, our first suggestion will seem rather obvious. Take a break. What? Ah, but I thought you said I'd still get my CS fix. Yeah, 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 we know, we know. Think of this as a way to get your CS fix in the long term. Taking care of your body and your mind is no joke. For all of the criticism he receives, Steel has the right idea. He has a rule that if he loses two FPL games in a row, he stops playing. We're not saying you have to have the same kind of rule, but it's important to recognize that it's very easy to fall into a downward spiral when you're chaining games together. So, what can you do during your break? Well, how's your water intake? It's recommended you have at least eight glasses of water per day. Have you? There's almost no end to the benefits of keeping yourself hydrated. No. Energy drinks don't count as a water substitute, and most importantly, water keeps your body in check, and if your body is feeling good, you'll be feeling good. And the same goes for exercise. While you're having your break, give your body a little workout. No, we don't mean go out and do a 10K, unless you want to. Just stretching your legs, getting some fresh air, or some simple hand and arm exercises can go a long way towards feeling both better and playing better. Most health organizations recommend a 5 to 10 minute break for every hour of sitting at a computer. You won't fit a marathon into those 10 minutes, but just walking around will do you a world of good. Do you think all those pro orgs have personal trainers just for fun? Getting swole isn't just for memes. Now here's a second way to improve. Try some of your own theory crafting. Now theory crafting is just a loose term for coming up with ideas for CS, ones that you want to use in a future game. Now, a lot of them won't work in a real match, but they're still useful and fun to think about. You never know where the next idea will lead to, so it allows for a lot of creative freedom. Not everyone will care about or even want to theorycraft, but if you've ever had any thoughts about leading a team, then this is your first step. You don't even need to launch the game in order to theorycraft. You can do it in your own head or with a pen and paper. But if you're more of a visual learner, then hopping into an empty server and having a play around is the best way to get started. When theorycrafting, you can think big or small. It could be finding the best ways an individual can move around the map, plotting rotation routes, or it can be how you orchestrate a whole team to take a bomb site. Where the smokes go, or how the players would position, predicting enemy positions, it's a big brain work. It's studying cause and effect. It's creativity. Even when your ideas don't pan out, you're still improving your understanding of the game. What's nice about theory crafting is that it's what would happen in an ideal CS, away from any mishaps or negativity. Which, let's be honest, is a fantasy most of the time. But if you've had just a few bad experiences lately and need a break, then theory crafting is a fantastic reminder of just how good CS can be. It's a way for you to refresh the depth of strategy that goes into our beautiful game. Next up, we have watching videos. Hey, kind of like you are right now. Look at that. So since you're watching pro guides, we know that you're already a pro at knowing which videos to watch. But once you've exhausted all of our pro guides content, where do you go next? Other than proguides.com, of course. Well, there's a content creator for everything, I guess. Nothing's videos are fantastic for getting into the mid-round mindset of a high-level player. Jordan has this uncanny skill of clearly narrating his thought process and decision-making while he's in the middle of a game. He'll explain what the expected actions of the enemy are based on what has happened in the round. He's basically giving you a snapshot of what his game sense tells him. You get a free look at thousands upon thousands of hours of CS experience just by watching a video. That 
is great value. Despite his stint as a streamer chasing content, Steele is still one of the best minds NACS has produced. In between the uploads of his streams, you'll find calm, educational videos on a whole host of topics. But being an IGL, for you newcomers, that's in-game leader, a lot of Josh's focus is on, you guessed it, leading a team. This is great for anyone looking to get into the leader role, but isn't sure where to start. Josh goes over everything from creating protocols for a team to analyzing a demo as an IGL. Even if you're not an IGL, you should look at this content. In fact, everyone should go look at what an IGL has to do to run a team. You'll have a greater understanding of CS as a whole and what your IGL has to do to keep your team running smoothly. Now, if you're after some more niche content, then check out the theory crafting series from Anders over at the Room on Fire channel. In his series, he talks through ideas he has that could shape the meta of future games, or just some fun secrets you should use in maps. Some of it isn't going to be completely relevant 99.99% .99 of the time, but it is still good to know. However, most of it is a great way of getting into theory crafting yourself. They're like gateway videos. You watch a couple of Anders videos and you think they're no big deal. The next thing you know, you're alone on a server tossing smokes around and imagining full sight takes for your next game. Where did it all go wrong? Another option for improvising is to watch back your own demos. Yeah. Oh yeah, we just heard you groan from here. No, watching your demos is not fun or sexy, but it works. How can you ever expect to correct your mistakes if you don't know what those mistakes are? It's not quite as simple as just looking back at a game and saying, yeah, I should have had better aim there, and then running off to do some DM. You need to look back at each of your deaths at least twice, once from your POV and once from the enemies. Now it's not enough to say, I got shot. You need to look at why and how it happened. Were you exposed to an angle and didn't realize it? Did the enemy push more aggressively than you expected? Were your timings off the entire round? Think of each death as a mystery that needs to be unraveled. Would Sherlock Holmes stop at, he got shot? No, of course not. Ideally, you're able to approach each of your demos from a neutral point of view, but that is difficult to do. It can help to try and make fun of yourself. Now, just imagine this is a demo of a good friend who you know you can poke fun at. Get sassy, make jokes, call them names when they deserve it. You don't care. I care, You're chef. way behind and you haven't got a Clue. But remember that reviewing your demos isn't meant to be a negative experience. So be sure to highlight your positives too. You want to keep doing what's working and remove anything that's getting you killed. If you get sick of looking at your demos and watching what you're doing wrong, then how about our fifth option, watching some pro demos. Just like your own demos, you can't just watch them and suddenly get better. You have to actually analyze them. You have to do the work. It's also not like you can just analyze demos from the best players in the world and suddenly you get better. Absolutely not. The quickest and easiest way to get better by using pro demos is to find a pro player who either already has a similar play style to you, or plays at the same position as you, or has a play style or holds positions that you want. Since they'll be going over the same ground as you, it's a lot easier to replicate what they do. You can move how they move, hold how they hold, and use utility in the same way that they do. It doesn't have to be as specific as a certain position on a certain map, although that does help. It can be as simple as a role that a player has in a team. If you want to get better at entry fragging, then try watching Apex. If you want to improve your opping, check out Alu, Device, or Simple. Try and remove the mechanical skill of the players from the equation when watching their demos. Look at how and where they move, how they embed utility into their playstyle, when they choose to get aggressive or defensive. You're not trying to replicate their aim, you're trying to replicate their decision making. Our last suggestion in improving without playing is experimenting with grenades. This is a little bit similar to theory crafting, but on a smaller scale. Grab yourself an empty server, get that infinite ammo console command on and start throwing grenades. You can do this for a couple reasons. The bigger reason is to simply get better with your grenades. Yes, we can all learn to set smokes and remember lineups for jump throws, but what about every other grenade? Do you feel confident throwing nades without a lineup? 
While lineups are important, it's just as important to be able to toss grenades freestyle. That's what you can use this time for. You can never know how exactly something like a retake will be set up. There aren't lineups for it, so improving your understanding of how your velocity will interact with grenades becomes invaluable for those situations. Another reason to have a play around with grenades is for the opposite goal, is to find new lineups. It's very easy to sink hours of your life just tossing grenade after grenade to a perfect lineup and make it consistent. It's not hard to see why this isn't appealing to a lot of people, but how do you think all of those lineups got discovered? By someone, just like you, doing the work to find them. The pros don't just have some magic ability to figure out lineups, except maybe Gob B, but they've just dedicated time to finding them, and you can do it too. So there you have it. Those are six ways that you can improve at Counter-Strike without actually having to dive into games. We're not expecting you to run out and do them all at once, but if you're ever worn down by matchmaking or pugs and want a break, then these are some of your options. Find which ones you enjoy the most and stick them in your training routine. And that's going to be all from us for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments below if you do anything to improve when you're not playing. If you'd like to learn more about Counter-Strike, be sure to check out ProGuides.com. My name is Andrew. You can find me on Twitch under the name Acebox. And until next time, good luck in your matches and stay hydrated.